Hey, hey everybody, I'm Z Garcia, and today we're taking a look at a small push your luck card game. This is called Four Pints, Please. The players are going to be spending the evening at an English pub, and you are trying to find the pounds you need in order to buy drinks and get to a certain number of victory points listed on those drinks so that you can win the game. All the while dealing with mishaps and things like that along the way, and of course with luck as well as you are flipping cards over from the top of a deck and seeing what you get. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. Uh, we'll come on back after that. I'll tell you what I think of it. In the game, the objective is to buy 12 points worth of beer. And these are up here. There's always going to be four face up. They have a point value and a cost in pounds and uh, different uh, types of beer there. And then you've got the player deck over here. So you're going to reveal four. You're going to shuffle up this deck here. And then you are ready to begin. It's like I said, a push your luck game. So you're going to be flipping from the top until either you bust through some effect in here or you're able to buy a card. So you start by flipping from the top and see what you get. So I've got two pounds there, so I cannot yet buy anything, so I have to keep going. And I flip over the next one, and now I've got five pounds. I can choose to stop right now and buy one of these two loggers here, or I can push my luck a little bit and try to go for six pounds for this one. The stout gets me four points, or seven pounds, and I can get the five point IPA. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to push my luck a little bit and look at that. I got a five pound note. However, even though I have a lot of money out here, I can still only buy one card. So I'm going to go ahead and buy that one. That goes in front of me. The cards are discarded and it is the next player's turn. We reveal a new one up here and they start flipping. So they've got two pounds and they just flipped over some peanuts. Unfortunately, peanuts are delicious and it's going to cost you two of the pounds that are revealed. So right now I'm zeroed out. And again, I keep going until either I completely bust uh, through an effect that ends your turn or I buy one. So I flip over again. The mop here would allow me to discard any spilled beers in front of me but uh, or the player who's going, but they don't have any, so they're gonna keep going. Okay, I've got two pounds there. And I flipped over pistachios as well, and that is one pound. So right now this is being consumed by the peanuts, which I will then consume myself, I guess. And the pistachios are taking one of these pounds away. I flip again. I elbowed someone else's beer. And so you pick another player who has to get rid of one of these. That's not good, seeing as to how that was my only one, and, I, and it was worth a lot of points. So that's gone. They're going to keep going. It is happy hour. So what that means is you may buy two this round and the second one, the cheaper of the two, will be half price. They keep going. I am now up to three coins. Uh, and I think that player is going to stop there. They've done enough damage. They don't want to keep going. So I'm going to draw that, buy that one up and discard the rest of these. And then we're going to go to our third player in this scenario, okay? Flip over a new one over here, and they start flipping. So one pound, they have six pounds. They're going to stop there. It's as good as it gets, unless I would have some nice effect. They're going to buy this one over here, and flip over a new one, get rid of these, and then it would be my turn again. And this keeps going around until someone gets to 12 points, and if at the end of your turn you have 12, or more points, you've won the game. So the different effects in here are as follows. You've seen all the different pounds and so forth. You're gonna have a coin purse, which allows you to keep the money. Uh, you would have, you know, any money you flip that you didn't spend, so extra money, you could save it for one round with the coin purse. You've got this one here, which means you're starting to get a little bit tipsy. One or two of these is fine. If you ever flip over your third one, your turn is over. We've got the penny. It actually doesn't do a whole lot. The penny is basically worthless. You flip over that card, you're not going to do much with it. You've got this, which is a spilled drink. You spilled your own. You're going to take that card, keep it in front of you, and it's minus one point. That's what the mop was for, by the way. If you flip a mop, you can get rid of all of these that you've got in front of yourself. And we've got a few other things. This one, you slip and fall, and uh, you're going to get rid of one of your own and your turn is over with that. We've got, you've already seen the pistachios. 
Uh, what else have we got? This one, you are buying a drink for someone else, so that turn you have to buy two drinks. You cannot stop until you have the amount to buy two of those drinks. Uh, a lot of money in here, of course. Credit card is going to allow you to buy any one drink. It doesn't matter what the cost is, you can buy one drink. So that's a great uh, flip. We've got St. Patty's Day over here. That card is going to allow you to take another turn immediately after your current turn is over. The mop you've already seen. This one, you are in need of a smoke break, so your turn is immediately over. And I think that might be largely it. I'm not sure if there's any other different cards. You've already seen the happy hour and a spill, and that's it. That's all the different kinds of cards you'll see in the game. So there you go, very simple. Take that mixed with push your luck. Uh, that is how you play the game. So let's go back up top and let me tell you what I think of it. All right, so there it is. As I said, game has a lot of push your luck, but it's also got a lot of take that. So that combination right there is, is something that I think a lot of people will not be happy with. Uh, if you don't like those two things, if you don't like the idea of getting hosed on the very first card flip, having your things taken away from uh, your display, things like that, this isn't going to be for you, you know, uh, and that's fine. So let's go ahead and uh, dive into it. I'm going to tell you what I think of it, and we're going to start with the things I thought were just okay, you know. There was nothing in this I hate it. It's, you know, especially when I leaned into the kind of game it was. It's a silly game. It's supposed to be a very light game. Take that in many ways. Um, but there are still things I had an issue with. The first one being, uh, and this I'm going to talk about game length in this uh, instance, the game box lists two through four players. The game manual lists two through eight players. I'm assuming the box is right because eight players or anywhere near eight players would be pretty horrendous in this game. For one thing, as you saw, you can get pulled back from your 12 victory points and that would just be maddening, compounding that with the downtime. I personally think the game is best at three. Even with four, you could have the, you know, other three players take fairly long turns. And when it comes back around to you, you flip over the first card. It's one of the, you know, take a smoke break cards and you're done. And it's the next player's turn. That's not going to happen all the time, but it very well could. You, again, keep going above four, and that's a that's a major issue for me. But stick with three, two, three players, maybe four, and then now you're talking. Unfortunately, that works against the kind of game it is, which is a silly push-your-luck party game. So that's why I feel like the game length doesn't quite nail it, and the replayability does not quite nail it either, you know. Um... I thought the game just does not have a lot of variability. Once you've seen all the cards with half a playthrough, you've seen everything that's going to happen, and it just comes down to pushing your luck, the surprises, you know. But nothing else is going to be different from one session to the next one. Now, the other things I am pretty pleased with. You know, the theme here, I think, is charming. It's original. It's well implemented. You know, um, they picked something really specific, and everything is about that topic and I like that and it's really easy to explain also because all the cards are thematic and I like that aesthetics really like the aesthetics in this game the illustrations are cute um, everything has been thought out well the cards are language independent so you can play with a, a mixed group of languages you know as long as everybody just takes a look at the rule book and you know what's going on so it's funny. It's, it's got some funny, charming things about it. So I really like the look of this game a lot. The ease of play is very high, of course. It's a very light, silly, simple little card game. And then lastly, tactic strategy, luck, right? This is all about luck right now. So this game has a lot of luck. A lot of luck. It is a basically random activity. And the only choice you have is... Do I, you know, and you can't even stop from, you know, you can't stop before you get something bad, really. So you have to get to enough money to buy one pint, the cheapest one out there, or you can keep pushing your luck and get a better one. That's it. There are several cards in there, though, that are going to take pints you've purchased away from you. 
So you got to be careful about that as well. That's really the only decision you are making in the game, right? I mean, besides, I guess if you buy someone else a drink, you get to pick who, right? I do wish there was a little bit more control in the game. Um, and I wish there was maybe just a little something different from session to session. You know what I mean? Maybe uh, there's a deck of cards with special powers and, and, and they're all rep they all represent different pubs. And you flip over one for the game. We are tonight at this pub. This special power applies. Uh, maybe you are bar hopping and so you play a few rounds in one and you flip over a new one, you know. Maybe one of the special cards and then the player deck could be let's move bars. And you flip over a new one. So little, little things like that would have given it a little more lifeblood, you know. As it is, I do enjoy it. And for the kind of game it is, I'd be lying if I said I didn't have fun with it and found myself charmed. That's the best way I can put it. It's a charming game. So I would recommend it if you are looking for a game that has a, an interesting theme that it tackles with an ease and a clarity and sort of a silliness that they didn't necessarily have to, right? This is the kind of theme that could have gone badly. Yet, the way it's dealt with here makes it nice. Makes it like, yeah, you're hanging out with friends for the night. I, I like that, you know? So, yeah, this is going to get a thumbs up from me. I do recommend it. There you go. That is four pints. Please check that one out if you're looking for a cute little push your luck and take that card game. I'm Z Garcia. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com.